I've always had a passion for being around and learning about animals. When I was younger, going to zoos and animal parks was always a part of my life. I wanted to share my passion with family and friends, so I started working with people that loved animals as much as I did, and my YouTube channel was born. Welcome back to my Animal Education Series. Today I'm here with Brent at the Lowellville Zoo. Hello. Hello. What do we have here behind us? We have Desmodus Rotundus, the vampire bat. And despite popular belief, vampire bats actually aren't as scary as you might think they are. Because they don't prey on people. And what do they prey on? Cattle, mostly. Um, these guys are known for preying on cattle. That is their primary food source. You find these guys from everywhere, from southern Mexico all the way down through the Americas, all the way down to Chile, Argentina, and there's a lot of cattle farming in those parts, so thus the bat goes where the food is. Um, primarily cattle is what we uh, feed on with these guys. Now here in the zoo setting, we've offered them a variety of foods. We've given them uh, bison, and we've given them deer blood, and we've given them pig blood as well. But primarily what they seem to prefer, the food they eat the best, is cow blood, so that's what we routinely offer. How hard is it to get for these guys? Not very hard at all. We obtain our blood from Boone's Butcher Shop in Bargetown, Kentucky. Very small, little family-owned place. Very small, little piecemeal operation. Not a very large, like, uh, you know, factory-type setting. They get a lot of business during deer season. And uh, very easy to obtain. We uh, get out there about once a month or so. They've been very accommodating to us, and they're good people. They treat us very well and they give us nice, high quality blood to feed our animals. That's one of the things you want to look for in a vendor is good quality product. And we try and buy local as best we can, so we keep it as close to Louisville as we can. Ours town's about an hour from here, give or take. So how big do these bats get? Not very big at all. Um, as you can see, they're quite tiny. Compared to the Rodriguez fruit bat, um, quite minuscule in comparison. About 40 grams or so is about the peak weight. Not very much at all. Tiny little guys. So how do these guys feed on cattle? Um, you were explaining before, mostly at night, and we can tell about the, kind of the night setup here. All vampire bats hunt by night, when the cows and the equine animals are fast asleep. And as you know, uh, they all sleep standing up. So these are easy targets, non-moving targets. A stationary target is, uh, is what you want if you're a vampire bat. Um, and primarily when the animals are asleep, these guys will uh, place a bite, usually on the back or between the shoulder blades. There's a little bit of an anticoagulant contained in the vampire bat saliva. This keeps that wound open and flowing. So for about the two or three minute duration, the animal can take a meal. There's no healing process that goes on there. Uh, that wound stays open and that animal can take a nice continuous meal. And that would go completely against most people's belief that they will attack people, right? There have been certain isolated incidents, uh, Peru and Uruguay in particular have had a couple where they um, take a meal from a human being. This is, this is mostly due to people watching their herds and sleeping outside. Uh, these are instances are very, very rare. Like they're not gonna seek out a person, they're like over a cow. Certainly not. These animals are opportunists and cows present themselves in the most abundance and so that's primarily what they're going to go for. It's huge herds in one small location, they're all sit still. Correct. The cow will never ever be known for its intelligence. For all its attributes, it is never going to be attributed as a very bright or intelligent beast, I'm afraid to tell you, but this is to the vampire bat's advantage. What is one of your favorite things about these bats? My favorite uh, thing about these bats is educating people about them. There is a certain uh, quality of this job that you can only get as a zookeeper and, where, and that is where you can dispel some myths and some misinformation. There's a great deal of, of bad and half-truth information out there and uh, if you can dispel some of that information, if you can give people actual, factual, bona fide, certified, good information about this animal and maybe dispel some myths or some misconceptions, that's a good thing. If an, a person walks away uh, a little bit more educated uh, then I've done my job. Uh, perhaps they walk, when they walked up, they were a bit standoffish or a bit grossed out or a bit taken aback by the name vampire, as most people are. Uh, then I, I have done something worthwhile that day. So since bats that eat on insects and feed on in insects have a really good echolocation, what do these guys have since they feed on cows? Do they have as good a sense of echolocation as they do? They certainly do, but they use it for a different purpose. 
Uh, primarily, the echolocation for the vampire bat is used to communicate with each other. They're a very, very socially conscious beast, and they can um, uh, exhibit attributes that are not common in most uh, species, such as, like, vampire bats will ferry or carry blood to an injured or an elderly member of the colony, and they do so um, of their own volition. For instance, and by that I mean there's no begging by the animal, there's no um, there's no outcast, and the, uh, the basic uh, gist of the subject there is they take care of their own. These animals are a very colony conscious animal, and when an animal cannot hunt or cannot gather food, another member of the colony will bring it to them. So kind of like a family member, if they're at home sick, you go to the store and you bring some like soup or something. Exactly. This is a mark of a very intelligent beast. And you're, oh, it's about early, kind of have kind of heat sensing abilities, like they can see like thinner uh, patches of skin on the animal. Correct. This is the way they choose a spot for the bite to occur. This is the way they choose like the best, most advantageous spot to take a meal. They can detect through thermal receptors the thickness of the hide of the animal. And if the thickness of the animal of the hide at that particular juncture is too thick, they will move to another spot. Through those thermal receptors possessed in their brains, they can determine a very thin spot in the skin where blood flow is directly underneath the epidermis. And there they choose their meat. Because it's the easiest for them. Correct. It's a very, very interesting adaptation to save them a lot of time. Yes. As you know, cow hide can be very, very thick in places and thinner in others. So if you guys enjoyed this week's episode, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Cole Shirk. As always, I'll see you next week.